Is it good to be in the house of God? Uh, I've not been here for almost a month now. Looks like I'm going to be the guest here to introduce. I'm Stella Ramayer, Pastor Joe Ramayer's wife. <laughs> in case you don't know, <laughs> I've been. And today we have a birthday boy in our midst, Leon. Hey, let's get happy birthday to Leon. Today, Nisha gives permission. All of you can give him a hug, a kiss, including the guys. Huh? Take him home. Oh, take him home. <laughs> feed him. Feed him. Yes. So good to be in the house of God. Nothing like having fun in God's house. What an awesome presence of God. Amen. When we sang that song, your presence is like heaven. This is like heaven when you start worshiping God and the presence of God come into this place. How many of you, you want to just hear a good message or you want your life to change? Message? Life to change. Amen. Okay, then. Then we're going to ask God. The Bible says you don't ask, you don't get. So we're going to ask, Lord, let, this, let today be a life-changing experience for me, shall we? Father, we thank you for your wonderful, wonderful, wonderful presence here in this place. As we rise, your people rise to praise you, worship you. We love you, oh God. We love you. We come in the name of Jesus. No other name but the name of Jesus. And we want to give our all to you. Father, we ask that today will be a life-changing experience. We open our hearts to you. We open our eyes. Oh, Spirit of God, open our eyes to see. Open our ears to hear. Open our heart to understand what you are saying to us. Draw us today as we draw near to you. You're going to draw near to us. We ask there to be a, such a release of your Spirit over us. Oh, thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, you all pray. Shout, amen, amen, hallelujah. Do you know that there's no Christianity without the Holy Spirit? Take the Holy Spirit out and you have a boring, dull, monotonous Christianity. Take the Holy Spirit out and you have a church that's just a social club or a religious institution. Is that what we get? You see across the world, you see there are nations that were once or started by revival today. The churches are empty. They've sold buildings away to other, you know, businesses and organizations. What is happening? And I pray that we will not see this happen in Malaysia. Amen. Because God's people here are rising and we are not going to draw back. I believe there's the greatest revival ever yet to see that's going to be poured out in Malaysia. The hearts of people are going to turn back to him. And uh, we're going to see scores of people supernaturally through the church going to come into the kingdom. Can you say amen to that? Is that our prayer? That we are praying week after week in our prayer meeting. God, God is waiting for us. You know, we always think that, oh God, we are praying, God, do something, do some. God is really waiting on us. We to initiate. He's our partner, but we need to initiate. And then he comes on board and does. The, so we need to pray, God, your kingdom come, your will be done in my life as it is in heaven. How many of you are ready? Oh, the Holy Spirit is about to be poured out today. And I want to speak about the Holy Spirit. I'm going to go in a series about the Holy Spirit. And uh, I pray that this today is going to be the start of a wonderful experience that you're going to have with the Holy Spirit. I want you to know the Holy Spirit is the most important person right now on planet Earth. That's right. The Holy Spirit is the most wonderful person that you can ever meet, you can ever know. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the most powerful person, more powerful than any presidents on earth. Whether it's a president of the United States or any great nation, he's the most powerful, more powerful than any, any bomb, any, any energy, any power on earth. The Holy Spirit is the greatest power. Amen. Yeah, we need to recognize him and we need, to be, we need to assign him what is really due to him. So, my title is, I'm saying, Living by the Holy Spirit. So, who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is not a feeling, although sometimes you can feel the anointing, the presence of God here. It's not a force. Not a Jedi force, uh, Star Wars, the force be with you. <laughs> not the force. It's not an influence. 
Uh, the Holy Spirit does influence us in our thoughts, in our emotions, in our every aspect. But he's not that. He's a person. He is God and he is a person. Amen. If you read into the Bible in the New Testament, understand the Holy Spirit. Many times, yeah, in Romans 8, 27, we won't look at the verse. But I want you to know that as a person, he has a will. As a person, he has emotions. As a person, he has a mind. And the Holy Spirit speaks. The Holy Spirit corrects. The Holy Spirit uh, teaches. And do you know the Holy Spirit uh, can be grief? The Holy Spirit, the Bible says, uh, can be insulted. A thing cannot be insulted, but a person can be insulted. Holy Spirit can be resisted. The Holy Spirit can be lied to. Wow. Powerful. We understand that he's a person and we refer him to the third person as a third person of the Trinity. That does not mean that he's third place and less important than the other Trinity. Huh? That you need to know that God is God and God manifests himself in three persons, which is God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. Very good. All of you know that. No, just like water. Water can come in three forms. Yes, we have liquid water, ice, you have vapor or steam. So it's the Trinity, God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know, when Jesus came down, he completed his work, he died, he rose again, and then he went back to God the Father. Where is he now? He's seated at the right hand of the Father, all right? And then Jesus said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to you to represent me, to take my place. So when you give your heart and your life to God, guess what? The person of the Holy Spirit is sent to come into your life to live inside of you. Is that good? He made you his home. Wow! God of the universe, the God who put the stars in the sky, who created everything, wants to live in us. He doesn't want to dwell in a temple or a church. Uh, you know, Solomon's temple was so magnificent. huh? Cost, I don't know, billions of dollars or whatever, decked with gold and everything. But God's not interested in living and staying in a, in a temple like that. So if I would say somebody wants to go and build you, Leon, a house that's so massive, so beautiful, with spa room, movie room, swimming pool, whatever you want, huge mansion. Would you like to stay there alone by yourself? Yes! Whew. Fantastic! Alone by yourself, without Nisha, okay? No pampering, nothing, nothing, just by yourself. I doubt it, right? How boring can it be all by yourself with everything, every movie you can watch? Everything has the best food you can eat. You rather live in a small house with Nisha than a mansion, correct? That's the same with God. Amen. Okay, Leon. Yeah, I know some, once in a while your men need to get away. Lah, huh? I know you just need to get away from because you just have enough <laughs> of women everywhere. <laughs> you know, my grandson, I asked my daughter, how, how is your women's camp? Oh, okay, must be stressful because we took care of the older three and she took care of the baby. She took the baby with her. And she's saying, oh, I think my son is just tired of seeing women, 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 women. She's so happy to be back home. Even that little baby knows <laughs> he's got enough of women. Like every woman in the church is trying to carry him, tease him, you know. Well, I'm trying to make a point here that the Holy Spirit come live inside of her. God loves us so much. God yearns for our fellowship so much, much more than many times, more than we want him. He wants us. But do you know the amazing thing is that you have to initiate. The Bible says, draw near to him. You draw near to him, then he will draw near to you. So you can be as close to him as you choose to be. Don't think that God picks some to be closer and others not. It is basically your, your move. If you want a close relationship with the Holy Spirit. You know, many times we, you know, we don't see him as a person and we say, oh, I want more of God. 
And so he's, he's like, oh, I want more of God. How can you have more of God, more of the Holy Spirit? He's there <laughs> as a person. Now, what we should be saying is that I want to yield more of myself to him. I want to know him more. Okay, so I believe that the Holy Spirit, this series, I'm going to take you into the power. Now I'm going to talk about the presence and, uh, you know, the work of the Holy Spirit. We're going to go into the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, most of us have not even seen a fraction of what the Holy Spirit can do. We hear the stories in the Bible and it sounds so unbelievable. Huh? And uh, the things that God's about to do and he's about to reveal is far greater than what we have read in the Bible. Because there's things that are not, the Bible says, we've not seen and we've not heard and we've not experienced that God's preparing for those who love him. And how many of us want those experiences? Well, the conditions that you love him. <laughs> and so, let's go to the first verse that I want to look at, John 16, verse 7. It says here, Jesus said this. In fact, actually, you've got the earlier verse. Never mind. we we'll start with this. However, Jesus said, I'm telling you nothing but the truth. When I say it's profitable, good, expedient, advantageous for you that I go away. You see, Jesus actually said it's better for him to what? Go away. And telling the disciples who followed him for three and a half years, the disciples must be panicked. Jesus, where are you going? No, we can't have you leave us alone because he has been with them. He has financed them. He has, you know, fed the thousands. <laughs> he has rescued them from life-threatening storm. He has healed the sick, raised the dead. He's done everything with Jesus in the midst. Nothing can go wrong. And Jesus said, now I'm going to go away. And Jesus said, I'm telling you the truth. Now, when has Jesus ever lied? Never, right? But what he's going to tell them is mind-blowing. So I said, I'm going to tell you the truth. That's better that I go away. What do you mean? That's better that you, that you go away. Uh, one of the reasons why it's better for the, Jesus to go away and for him to send the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's continue the verse. It says, because if I do not go away, the comforter, the counselor, helper, advocate, intercessor, strengthener, standby, will not come to you into close fellowship with you but if I go away I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you so you can see here that it's better that the Holy Spirit comes than Jesus because Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God it's the Spirit of Christ and he's with us in our spirit you know when Jesus came he came as son of God and son of man he was totally God but in a human form and in a human being, as a human form, he could only be in one place at one time, correct? And he's only limited time. Uh, and can you imagine huh, that if Jesus was alive and we are around, some of us say, oh, I wish I could be with Jesus. I was in Bible times when I could talk to Jesus and ask him questions. You know, can you imagine if Jesus was on earth and he's still in Jerusalem? We all have to take a plane all the way there to see him. To make appointment, three million people to make appointment with him? Well, that's a lot. You probably have to wait long months before you ever get one few minutes to talk to him. Correct or not? And he has to sleep as a, in a human being. He has to eat and his hours are limited. And he could be at one place at one time only. So that's why he sends the Holy Spirit to take his place. Because the Holy Spirit can be in all places at all time. Every continent, can you imagine? Every nation. And he can speak every language. Huh? Every language. Languages that you've never heard of before. He could uh, minister to millions of people one at one time. That's why he's better. And if he's still not convinced that the Holy Spirit's better, I want you to think about Paul. Do you know, Paul never really, really knew Jesus physically as a person like Peter, James and John, all the disciples, right? Huh? They walked with Jesus for three and a half years. They ate with him. They listened to his teaching. And Paul came later. His experience was he had a supernatural encounter He's, he, he was on the way. Actually, he was trying to persecute the church and, and imprison the Christians, huh? And uh, out of zealousness, thinking that he was doing the will of God. 
until he was got knocked down from his high horse. <laughs> and then he got saved, born again. And then he started to, you know, become raised and called and chosen to be apostle to the Gentiles. Now, of course, do you know what? He never met Jesus personally. And yet the life of Paul <laughs> was so impacted by Jesus because of his dependence on the Holy Spirit. Do you know what Peter once said about Paul's writing? In fact, Paul wrote, if you look at the New Testament, almost half of the books of the Bible were written by Paul who never met Jesus one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> Can you imagine? Paul, and Peter said about Paul and said that his letters has blown me away. He knew Jesus so well. How did he know Jesus so well? Because he depended on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that was teaching him, that was guiding him, that was his companion all this time. And so I want you to know that the Holy Spirit with you is far better than having Jesus with you. Amen? Are you convinced? Some of you are not too convinced. <laughs> What's the role or the responsibility of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit? Now we saw just now, right? Jesus said that he's what? He's going to be your comforter. That was the word, comforter. Do you know the word comforter in the original language? Today I'm doing a bit of teaching. Huh? Okay, all those of you, you've enjoyed pastor, you enjoy others. I come with teaching. I love to teach, okay? This is something that I believe that God gives us different gifts in a church. So to add to empower you and to equip you. So the word comforter here is in the original language here. That word comes, that word cannot be explained in English just with one word. So that's why you find the Amplified Bible has translated the word into the comforter as the what? The counselor, what else? The helper, the advocate, intercessor, strengthener, stand by just to see what you need. He's always standing by, quietly waiting for you huh? to request, to acknowledge him, to ask, to refer to him. Okay, so let me just briefly, I, I don't have time to go through every single one of I'm just going to pick a few. And the first one I want to talk about is Holy Spirit as a counselor. He's the best counselor because he knows all about you, your makeup, your weakness, your strength, every single thing because he created you. And yet many times when we're in problem, where do you go to? We run to, first thing, we run to our parents, we run to our friends, we run to everybody else, except the counselor. I don't mean we cannot go to others. Huh? Well, if you have to go to someone for counseling, our advice is to go to someone who has the counselor inside of them to counsel you. You know, just recently when we went to visit our daughter, I didn't know she went through a, a really bad patch. Uh, and she said that she, it, 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 it like bothered her so much that her husband said, why don't you go and see a counselor, a professional counselor, huh? And, uh, you know, Australia, you're paid uh, to see a counselor. It's all paid for. Is that good? And so she went and uh, she sat there and she said, and this lady was a spirit-filled Christian. Okay. And she said, I was sitting there and just listening, talking and listening to what she said. It's, she said, it's almost like God speaking to me. Because that lady was a spirit-filled Christian and he's, she's giving answers that probably is, you know, directed by the Holy Spirit. You know, I'm saying world's method does not help. You no, know, when I was there, I saw on the news, 3 million Australians are on antidepressants. What do you do when you say you're depressed and you go and see a counsellor or you go and see a psychiatrist? They just prescribe you some pills, yeah, to treat the symptoms because they don't know what's wrong with you, really. So that's all the world does. The world's method, man's method fails because they don't know. <laughs> they can't help you. They, are, they, they fail. But God, God's word, God's word works all the time. And you need to know, come to the counselor, let him. And he gives you the word. He reveals to you what's your real problem. You think it was that? When it is this. And he will show you. And when he shows you, he also gives you the power to overcome or to make the changes that you need to make change. Is that good? And today we have so many counselors here. You don't go to a, a specialist or a, psycho, a psychologist or anything like that. Just go to one of the leaders. Yeah? 
and let them and say, I, 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 I need some counsel. I, my, I'm, I'm so messed up now, my mind. I just don't know what to think and what to do, you know, with my marriage or my job or whatever. And just talk to them. And let the Lord sp speak to you and minister to you His Word, huh? to heal you, to just uh, make changes in your life. Now, the thing, next thing about the Holy Spirit, He is the helper. He's the enabler or the strengthener. You know, it refers to someone, a helper, it's this. It's someone who comes alongside with you to assist you. God, the Holy Spirit, and in another word, say, stand by. He's here to assist us. He's here to enable us to, to live the life that we are called to live. Let me tell you, you can't love the way God wants us to love. No way to love people unconditionally. No, the love that the world has to offer is all conditional. You scratch me, I scratch you. You pat me, I pat you. You slap me, I slap you. Double. <laughs> That's the world's kind of love. You know, it takes the Holy Spirit empowering to love the way Jesus loved. To forgive your enemies. Huh? Not just say, oh, I just want to forget about this guy. <laughs> no, he said, bless them. <laughs> Bless them. I wish they died. Bless them. Yeah, bless them. Love them. Love them. Impossible to do what God calls us to live, the high call as a Christian. Huh? It's just a good book without the power of the Holy Spirit. I know some of you have gone through pain in your life and people have hurt you so badly. Huh? And it took the Holy Spirit releasing you to forgive. So that you can move on. Huh? Amen. So it takes the Holy Spirit to help you to be the best parent. You know, how many of uh, today people have postpartum depression? Huh? They don't know what to do with the baby. They get depressed. Mental illnesses. You know, there's so many things that's happening in this world. No, but you can be the best mom. Because the Holy Spirit is going to empower you, anoint you to be a mom. I can't imagine that I could be a mom raising three girls. Honestly. I never had a childhood, like I said, I never grew up. I was just grew up one tough person, you know, think I can just, you know, do things on my own and everything fails. But the Holy Spirit can teach you to be the best mom. The Holy Spirit can teach you to be the best dad. The Holy Spirit can, can, uh, can help you in every situation, anything, whatever you need to pray for people, to witness, to, to uh, lead, whatever it is. Depend on the Holy Spirit. He's ready to help you. Have you asked for his assistance at your work? As a parent? Huh? In your finances? We need to. He's just waiting for us to call him. And the third one, Holy Spirit is a convictor. I like this. The Holy Spirit is the only one who's successful in convicting people of sin. Not you, not me. So many times we try to do God's job for him, huh? How many of us know we fail? <laughs> I'm trying to convince my husband, Joe, that he needs to make some changes. How many of us wives always try to do that? Come on now. <laughs> or maybe some of you men trying to make, convince your wife, she needs to change. And you fail. The more you try, the worse it's becoming. Huh? And become antagonistic. Like, who, who are you to think that I need to change? You need to change, man. Huh? Look at you. You are telling I need change. I tell you, you are in serious trouble. And, you know, you will go on a fighting match after that. Okay, so what a relief it is when we, I realize that I don't need to change anyone. I don't need, absolutely don't need to change. Of course, if you are in a position of leadership, you need to bring correction. And if as a parent, you need to correct your children, train your children. Yes, we need to do all that. But we don't have to like take on the responsibility to tell everybody what's wrong. I've, I've, we have always, as pastors, have people come and tell us, Pastor, if you talk to my husband, he'll change. If you talk to my wife, she will change. Are you sure? Are you sure? Huh? If they won't even listen to the Holy Spirit, if they won't listen and obey the word, do you think that we are what? We can just do magic, pray for them and things going to change? No. If they're not ready for change, let me tell you, there's nothing you can do about it but to pray for them. 
and don't pray arrogantly and say, oh, how God, she's so bad. She, she needs to change. She needs you. No, no, no. Pray humbly because we need changing as well. While we're waiting for somebody else to change, let's pray to God. You do a change in me as well. Amen? All right. Is that good? How many of us say, Psh, oh, what a relief now. That's not my job. That's the Holy Spirit. Yeah, <laughs> that's good one. Okay, let's read another scripture here. It says in John 16, verse 9 to 12. About sin. Oh, I think I missed that part, huh? John 16, 8, continue. And when he comes, he will convict and convince the world and bring demonstration to it about sin. You see that? The Holy Spirit is the one that convict and convince people about that sin and about righteousness. It's not your good works that people try to, you know, show off and think that their good works is what earn points with God. No, God says it's the righteousness that comes from Him. Uprightness of heart, right standing with God. And about judgment, God's not judging you. Okay, let's go down to the next scripture. John 16, verse 9. Got it? About sin, because they do not believe in me, trust in me, rely on me, adhere to me. About righteousness, uprightness of heart, and right standing with God, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler, evil genius, that's what he is, all the new evil that's coming out lately, it's all concocted by him. He's invented more evil. Huh? He's the evil genius. And what happened to this evil genius, the ruler of this world, Satan? Is judged and condemned and sentence already is passed upon him. Hallelujah! He's a defeated foe. He's lost. <laughs> and I have still many things to say to you, Jesus said. But you are not able to bear them or to take them upon you or to grasp them now. See, this is what I'm going to say. The next thing about the work of the Holy Spirit, He's, He is your guide. He is your teacher. You know, I like the word guide. such a nice word. You know, the Holy Spirit doesn't dump all the truth on you at one go. You know, you need to change one, two, three, four, five, six, A, B, C, D, E, F, all the things that, you, there's so many things that you need to change. No, he does not do it. And Jesus said that if I want to tell you everything that's wrong with you, you won't be able to take it or won't be able to even understand it. Oh, that's so good, isn't it? <laughs> Because there's so many, there's still some things that are wrong with me. Of course, I've, I've come a long way. You've come a long way since we come to know Jesus. But there's still things that are wrong with us. There are things that are not working right with us, yes? And so we thank God that He's leading us. He's guiding us. He's working in us. He's showing us little by little the areas that need to be changed. He will show us. He will show us what we need to change and when we are ready to change. So when we look at somebody and say, why isn't he so obvious? Why is, isn't he changing? There's always a journey everybody has huh, in their walk with God. And when they go deeper in with God, will they begin to understand or see? And God will open their eyes to see what needs to change. Let God be the one that will show them. Yes? And when God shows them, He doesn't just show you what is wrong with you. He gives you the power to change. And if you don't change, it's not God's fault. It's because you choose not to. And He'll come back again and work on that area again and again and again. Isn't that God so patient? Oh, we would have given up on people a long time ago. But God is such a patient God huh, that works on us again and again. So know that. Look at the disciples. They're not perfect. Huh? They're the least qualified of all apostles, and yet you see that God uses them because they are willing. Jesus said, there are lots of things that are wrong with you. But I can't tell you now everything. But I'm going to go, but I'm not going to leave you oftenless. often. I will bring the Holy Spirit, and He will teach you. He will guide you. He will lead you. Amen. Some people here, you think that everybody is a problem. When actually, you are a problem. How many people you know is like that? Don't look at them. <laughs> huh? We always think that everybody is a problem when actually they have, they have the problem. Pray for them, okay? <laughs> that God will 
start a recovery work on them. And when they're ready, they're ready to change. The Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. Let me show you verse 13 and 15, the next scripture. I'll give you all the scriptures so you know this is from the word. And when he, the spirit of truth, the truth giving spirit comes, he will guide you into all the truth, the whole full truth. For he will not speak his own message on his own authority, but he will tell whatever he hears from the Father. He will give the message that has been given to him. And he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come, that will happen in the future. He will honor and glorify me because he will take off, receive, draw upon what is mine and reveal, declare, disclose, transmit it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. That is what I meant when I said the Spirit will take the things that are mine and reveal, declare, disclose, transmit it to you. I may be your teacher today, but you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you who is your permanent teacher. Is that good? And He's transmitting things to you. It's like a transfusion of revelation from God. You see, the Holy Spirit can take, you know, I'm just so amazed at the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can take what I preach on a Sunday, and when I hear what people are telling me, it's like taking what I preach and applying it into the needs of different people in different situations. And some people hear this that others don't hear. It's like, did you hear that? I'm even surprised. Did I say that? Huh? But they heard what the Spirit of God was Saying to them. So God works individually in different people's lives. Yes? And He, according to your needs, as you are open to Him, that's what He will do. He'll come and guide you. Now, how is the Holy Spirit guiding us? Okay, let's look at one scripture, Psalms 48, verse 14. It says here, For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even until death. God promised that He will be your guide Forever. Hallelujah. Everybody shout forever. He's not going to leave. He's not going to forsake you. Stop thinking that he will guide you someday, in the future, maybe. No, 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 no. We always think like that. It's, oh, yes, God will guide me in the future. No, God is guiding us now. Faith is now. God is guiding you now and leading you now. You believe that? Tell your neighbor now. God's guiding you, and God is leading you now. Amen? Many times we don't get what we ask for, and we are confused, like, oh, why God didn't do what I want? And uh, we are like, oh, maybe what's wrong? You know, we're going on and on and struggling with, and we think that God's not guiding us when actually God is guiding us, when we ask Him, when we pray. And the Bible says very clearly, it's Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, it says, lean on. Trust in and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, recognize and acknowledge Him and He will direct and make straight and plain your path. So every day, let me ask you, do you tell God, this is my plan, Lord, but you direct my path? And if what I planned did not work out, I don't want to get so upset because maybe you got a better plan for me. God knows better than us. <laughs> Some of us, we think we plan well, but we're not so smart to run our lives, eh? Is that insulting to say you're not so smart to run your own life? No? Tell somebody then. You are not so smart to run your own life. <laughs> <laughs> How does God guide us? God guides us through His Word. That's the main primary means that God guides us. So read your Word. If you want guidance, read the Word of God and know what God's guiding us. God never contradicts what He says in His Word. Don't tell me now, oh, God spoke, the Holy Spirit spoke to me to divorce my wife and marry another woman. God is not going to contradict His Word, all right? And some people, they come up with things, oh, yes, the Holy Spirit's just to justify what they're doing, it's right. Eh, eh, no way. I know it's definitely not the Holy Spirit. Okay? The Word of God guides us. He guides us by His wisdom. And many times wisdom is really common sense, huh? Huh? Yes, no. 
If you can't even pay your rent, don't tell me you're going out to buy a car. No common sense, right? Now, God guides us through his peace. Some important decisions, you know, you're not sure. Should I take this job? Should I take that job? Just wait. And after a few days, if that peace is there, that's an indication that you're on the right path. But if you're disturbed and all that, let me tell you, that's not. God guides us through his peace. Okay, this fourth one. He guides us through his voice. This is what I like. He's a person he speaks to us. He guides us through his voice. Some of us not heard the Holy Spirit for a long time. Why? Because we've ignored him. Do you know he's the most ignored person in the church? We get up in the morning and we don't talk to him. We drive to work one hour and we never spoke a word to him. Huh. Ah. I mean, if you, you are riding a car with your wife and going to work and you don't talk to her for one hour, it's such an insult, isn't it? Huh? Or one and a half hours you, you drive with your colleague or whatever and you just ignore him. He can be talking to you, but you just ignore him. Or you take somebody out for a meal and then you invite them out, but you just never talk to the person. So you know what I mean? Do we acknowledge him? Do we say good morning to him? We say good morning to everybody. Do we say good morning to the Holy Spirit in the morning? Do we acknowledge him? Do we refer to him when we are making big decisions concerning investment or your job or raising the children or, you know, your schoolwork? Let me ask the Holy Spirit. Do you know he knows schoolwork better than you? And you find you do your homework Far faster than when you try to struggle, skip service so that you can do your work and study. It's not going to work. Depend on the Holy Spirit. Come to church. That doesn't mean you don't have to study. Eh? I just like transfusion of notes the Holy Spirit is going to give me. Oh, I don't need to study. No, no, no. You still have to study. But the Holy Spirit, if you depend on the Holy Spirit, He's going to help you. And your assignment might come up to be the best assignment of your whole group. Amen. So we need to depend on the Holy Spirit in everything. He's quiet before us. We need to learn to fellowship with Him. We need to listen to the Holy Spirit. Some people always ask me, how do you know the voice of the Holy Spirit? How can you recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit? Do you know in a New Testament church, nobody ever asked this question because they're all interacting with the Holy Spirit. They spoke about the Holy Spirit. They refer to the Holy Spirit. They look to the Holy Spirit. They depend on the Holy Spirit. Okay, it's not in the scripture up there, but Acts 20, verse 22, 23, if you can take it down and read it when you go back. Paul says here, and now I'm compelled by the Spirit, he said, and I'm going to Jerusalem. And then continue, he said, I know in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that hardship, that prison and hardship are facing me. Wow. If you didn't recognize the Holy Spirit, we'd probably say, hey, get deep behind me, Satan. What do you mean I'm going to prison? No. Oh, but that's the Holy Spirit spoke. And do you know that Acts 8 verse 26, 29, Philip could differentiate between the voice of an angel earlier, and the angel spoke to him to go to Samaria, and the voice of the Holy Spirit. He could recognize. It's an angel speaking to me now, and next minute, that's the Holy Spirit. How many of you, you know, you can be talking to your friend and then your husband is just one corner and you could recognize your husband's voice? In the midst of the crowd of people, everybody's talking, but you can pick out your husband's voice, right? Can I? When you call home, when your husband picked the phone, you can recognize his voice, right? Differentiate between him or in an office or whatever. Why? Because you spend so much time with him. You recognize his voice. So we need to spend time fellowshipping with him. Are we fellowshipping with him? Let's to develop our ear, not just our natural ear. Do you know we have our five senses, our physical, natural five senses. We also have spiritual five senses that we can, that we need to develop. And many of us, our spiritual senses are not developed. And that's why we don't hear we don't see, we don't taste, we don't smell. But Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Can be taste. Holy Spirit wants to guide us. 
and lead us. And you know, the last thing I want to say is the Holy Spirit leads us supernaturally. He's a supernatural God. And I pray that our church will be a supernatural church. They're walking closely with the Holy Spirit and we are experiencing supernatural all the time. Just like in the New Testament church. Hallelujah. You know, supernatural things are really hard to explain. But when you know that God leads supernatural, I've seen it time and again. I've got my journals. I've written all the supernatural things that God is. I want to share some and some of you to, con- to let you know that God does guide supernatural even small things concerning your personal life, he cares about you. How many of you remember my two stories about how I lost my earring? Not this one. I changed my earring today. Uh, that are as tiny as this, huh? My two. Twice I lost it. And twice I asked the Holy Spirit where it is. Okay, sometimes he doesn't tell you immediately, okay? And if you ask again, he's not going to get irritated you, with you like some people. Uh. Why do you keep asking me again and again? Uh? Don't worry, Holy Spirit's not going to get irritated if you have to ask him a few times, all right? And I asked again. And he showed me very clearly. First time, he showed me, he said, did you hear a, a, boy, a, a sound when you were taking the laundry to the laundry room? I said, yes, that's where it is. And true enough, I went there and right as I enter, that was the earring sitting on my laundry floor. The second time, the same thing. I lost my earring, but it didn't, I didn't find it until the third day. I call up everybody. I call up the spa and say maybe during the massage, uh, they could have pulled it up or whatever, checked my bathroom, my bedroom, everything. And it means so much to me because it's my 25th anniversary gift from Pastor Joe that I love it so much. You know what means a lot to you? It means a lot to God. I want you to know. I was doing my gym, exercising, doing my... And suddenly I asked the same thing. Holy Spirit, where is my ring? Where is my earring? And it says right here. This is all this treadmill. And that's all the big dumbbells that I don't go. I don't know what made me go. Instead of searching here, I walked right there. This huge weight that's there. Stop, look down. And there was my earring. For three days, it was sitting right there. Nobody took it. Huh? Is that good? Once I even lost my specs. So what if you lost your specs? You can just buy another one. No big deal. But it means a lot to me. I remember, pastor asked me the next day. I searched everywhere. I couldn't find my specs. Then pastor asked me that morning, have you found your specs? I just said, I have not, but I know I'm going to find. I know I'm going to find my specs. And straight away, I saw a picture of my specs sitting under the cupboard. My dressing cupboard, it's a huge dressing cupboard, and it's that high. It's that, I don't know how the specs probably slide. I could have kicked it, dropped it on the floor and kicked it inside. I took the torchlight, and I went to look at it. True enough, it was seated right there where I saw. Holy Spirit showed me. You know, Holy Spirit is supernatural. I, let me tell you, there's so many I can go on and on and on. I just want to convince you the Holy Spirit cares about you. Cares about you so much. That little, little details that you think is unimportant, that you should be relating. The Holy Spirit is standing by to us. So one time when I went for this uh, color conference, huh? first time at color conference, and my friend Pastor Bobby was such a darling, she sent a, a chauffeur to pick us, a lady, a girl to pick me up. And Annie was with me, Annie Ng. I remember this because it's so, so amazing. I wrote it in my diary. And, you know, and uh, we decided the conference is going to start a few days' time, but the Sunday we w- wanted to go to Hillsong Church. Who won't want to go? Huh. So I went with, uh, and then Annie said, uh, I think we have, I've got an appointment. I can't go for the second service. We were made the appointment to go for the second service, but he changes her mind and said, let's go for the first service. So we decided, okay, let's go for first service. And we went for first service, but we have already scheduled her to pick us for second service. And so we went there, like in this church, and suddenly we realized we don't have her number. I only know her name is Jenna, Jenny Cotter. But I don't have her number. She picked us up and dropped us, and that's it. She didn't give us her, her number. So how are we going to inform her or call her or talk to her? You know? So I'm like panicking. What shall we do? That's like, you know, he was also how thousands of people that are there. Huh? This is the first service. So I don't know what made us. We went to the car park, walking around trying to see. And nobody's in the car park because the service is about to start. And we're there praying. Oh, Holy Spirit, help us. What's going to happen? I don't have. And I know the only person who has is 
uh, Bobby's PA, Rebecca Woods, that has been communicating with me. So, oh, maybe I should ask Rebecca Woods, well, how to find Rebecca Woods? I don't know, you know, where is Rebecca Woods? And then, I'm not kidding, huh? while we are alone on, at the car park, everybody is parked, the service is about to start, a lady starts walking towards my direction, and the Holy Spirit said, that's Rebecca Woods. I was like, this real? <laughs> As she came near, I couldn't remember how Rebecca Woods looks like, okay? All the whites look the same, right? Just like we all Indians all look the same, Chinese looks the same. I mean, how to recognize when it's somebody that you only met once? I was like being cautious, I just, instead of saying, ah, hi, are you Rebecca Woods? Uh, Do you know Rebecca Woods? I asked her the question like that. And she turned around and said, I am Rebecca Woods. Ha! Huh? Praise the Lord! Rebecca Woods of all person walking directly headed towards me because I needed help. I said, if only Rebecca Woods would show up, I would have the solution solved. And she gave me the number, of course. You see, supernatural God is able to lead you to the deal, to close a deal, to show you things that you do not know. And the Holy Spirit can comfort you like no other. I remember when I was pioneering this church, I was so lonely. We were going through such a hard time financially, and I was grazing up my three little kids. And Pastor was away for this, uh, you know, he travels a lot when those days, huh? And I was alone, and we had a guest speaker, uh, a black American lady. Two ladies came to stay with me. It was such a glorious weekend. Such amazing time I had with, with her. That weekend ended, and I was alone by myself in while kids put the tuck of my kids to bed. I was alone in my bedroom, and I was feeling very sad and lonely. And said, God, I wish I had somebody like this couple that I could talk with about my ministry, about my pain, and my things. No kidding, I was there, crying, God. And you know, I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit, so clear, I'm here. And the moment he says, I'm here, the whole room became so bright. It's like my light suddenly, ding, like became brighter than its normal brightness. I was like, the presence of the Holy Spirit just came to comfort me and said, you are never alone. I'm here, just two words, I'm here. Some of you need to comfort, and you're looking for someone to comfort you. Men can't give you what? They can't comfort you. You turn to your husband, he can't comfort you. Or you turn to your wife, you turn to your girlfriend, you turn to... Come to God because he knows you. And he can give you the comfort like nobody else can comfort. Amen? How often do we turn to others when we fail? to turn to the Holy Spirit. Today, I pray that you will come to know Christ in such an amazing way that you will give him the attention he deserves, you will, that he lives with you, he is always with you, he's ready at all times to minister to you, and you must pay attention to him. And sometimes he's going to tell you, I'm going to talk about the power of the Holy Spirit the next meeting, huh? how, how you can receive the power of the Holy Spirit, how you can begin to move in the power of the Holy Spirit, and you'll be able to do amazing things that you in the natural can never do. Because the Holy Spirit power, the Holy Spirit is going to dispense gifts to your life, and you begin, to, as you begin to walk closely with Him. Now, let me ask you a question. Now, how many of you, if somebody totally ignores you, I mean, how many of you will pursue a person that totally ignores you? That doesn't seem interested in you? Unless you want to uh, maybe connect with the person and, and bring that person to the Lord. So even if he ignores you, you still go pursue that person. Hey, come to church lah. Come to church. Come. You know? Okay. But if, if not, how many of you will actually pursue a person that like totally ignore you, don't like you? God, ah? Anyone like that? God, ah? Talent. <laughs> Patience, patience. See, girls like to be pursued, you see, so he knows, huh? <laughs> Not the, way, the opposite, huh? The she pursue means you run, right? <laughs> okay, why well, I'm trying to say that, how, who are we made in an image of? God. If we are like that, guess what? God's like that as well. God's not going to pursue you if you ignore him. 
if you're not interested in him. That's why you're wondering why all these things never happened to me. Why Holy Spirit never show up, God never show up in supernatural ways, in things like that to me. Because you're not pursuing him. You are ignoring him. But the more you talk about him, the more he's going to manifest. I'm telling you. I've learned through the years that there are times where I've totally ignored him. I, I remember looking at my diary. Totally nothing. Nothing. Because I was busy doing my work. Until I come back to acknowledging him again. Holy Spirit, teach me. Teach me. You know the one thing wonderful about the Holy Spirit, God? He's such a forgiving person. The moment you repent and say, oh, I'm so sorry, Holy Spirit, I've drawn back. I've been so distracted by so many things. I've ignored you totally. Please, Holy Spirit, come. I invite you back into my life. Psh, he comes right back. Because he yearns for you. The Bible, James 4, 8, says the Holy Spirit yearns jealously for you. Do you know what? That means he longs for you intensely, cons consistently. But our, our, we are not like that, huh? We are, don't we? Hmm? We are very passionate when we are courting. The, after that, ah, too busy with my work. We are not very passionate in our relationship anymore, right? Huh? Your husband yearns for us. What do you do? Don't disturb me, lah. I'm tired. <laughs> Tell me, we don't yearn. Our yearning is only temporal. Yes, but not with God. The amazing thing with God is God yearns for us. God loves us so much. I don't know how else to tell you God loves you so much. If you ever want to find a friend, he's going to be your best friend. He sticks to you closer than a brother. He will never, never betray you. He'll never leave you or forsake you. Today, you can know him. Today, we are going to say, Holy Spirit, come. If you never had, maybe you're born again. If not born again, then today, you need to invite God into your life and invite the Holy Spirit to come into your life. Amen? And when you invite Jesus into your life, the Holy Spirit comes into your life because the Holy Spirit is the one that gives you, make you born again inside. Now, many times we don't experience the things of God because maybe you use our head so much. Sometimes God works outside our natural mind. We don't understand. Ah, all these things about Christianity is all a bunch of people who need God as a crutch. I don't need God. I can run my life pretty well without God. Yeah, take away all your success. Take away all that you have. Are you, are you going to be as confident as you are? The life will collapse without God. But with God. With God. I'd rather suffer with God. To be with God. Than to suffer without God. Than you have with God. You have that peace in spite of all. You know, I have people coming to me and said, you know, this person just got saved and he became a bankrupt and he was really, really bad and then he, got, he got saved. He said, the moment I gave my heart to Jesus, I have such a peace. Situation still same. I would believe that things are going to change for him. Huh? The curse is broken. The blessing of God, whatever curse the enemy has put over your life is broken and the blessing of God starts flowing and you don't have to chase blessing because blessing is going to chase you. Amen? Arvin? Yeah, that's what's going to happen. You know, he said, I got so much peace. Strange. This peace is not when everything is peaceful. Everything is okay. That's not the peace. That's the world's peace. This peace is one you're going through hell on earth. And you have the peace of God inside. That's God's peace. God is peace. When you see feel peace coming towards you, that's God. God is love. Not God has love. God is love. When you feel the love of God coming to overwhelming love of God coming over you, that is God. Would you open your heart to Jesus today? Will you open your heart to Jesus today? Amen. I'm going to call on the pastors to come right now. We're going to anoint the oil. You know, the oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Today we're going to ask you to come forward. The crowd is not that big. I believe we have time for every person. And you're saying, stand with me, can you? Please stand. If you're born again, you have received Christ into your life, but you, have, you don't have a personal, close relationship with the Holy Spirit, or you were ignorant. Maybe you were ignorant. You were not ignoring uh, Him, but you were ignorant. But today, you say, yes, I'm going to give my heart to the Holy Spirit. I want the anointing today. We're going to anoint you with oil. 
You're going to come and you're going to yield yourself to the Holy Spirit. And say, yes, Holy Spirit, anoint me. Anoint my ears. We're going to put the oil on your ears, on your hands, on your forehead, whatever it is. We're going to pray and release the anointing of God over you. The anointing of the Holy Spirit over you. So that you will start to hear. Your ears will be open to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. And you will start to see things that you've never seen before. You're going to see supernaturally. <laughs> You're going to speak the words that God's going to put up or download into your heart. And you're going to do the works of God. You're going to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You know, one lady in Klang came forward. I just say, I'm, I'm anointing everybody with the oil. After the service, she came to me so excited. Pastor Stella, Pastor Stella, I had such pain on my leg because of my holiday. I walked so much. This elderly lady in her 70s, I was so painful my leg. When you anointed me with oil, I didn't even pray for her to be healed. She fell under the power and she got up and her pain was gone. That was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's going to touch you. The Holy Spirit knows what your need is. The Holy Spirit's going to touch you. As you come forward right now, that's what we're going to do. Can you, musicians, can you come up quickly and sing, Your presence is like heaven. And we're going to come down and pray with you. So make your way to the front, please. All right. Wait, wait to the front one at a time. And we're going to anoint you with the oil. We're going to anoint you with the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit be released into your life today, right now. Amen. Come on. It doesn't matter who. You can go to Pastor Nathan, Pastor Sam. Come to me. It doesn't matter where you go. It is the Holy Spirit that's going to be present here. That's good. Just do one important thing. You. You. Okay, there are people that we can pray so fast things happen because they're so yielded to the Holy Spirit. There are others, they just stand there like a block of wood. Nothing happens. So, yield to the Holy Spirit right now, okay? As you take turns, very quickly, very quickly, huh? Just a touch of the Holy Spirit.